This right here is a very simple menu. You click a hamburger icon and it opens up a navigation. Now the thing that makes this really cool is that there's no JavaScript, no weird checkbox hacks. It's entirely just HTML and CSS. This here is the future of front-end development, but you can't use it just yet as it's not supported in Firefox and there are accessibility issues. However, it's still intriguing to see how we'll become HTML programmers in the future. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. All right, so let's get started here. I'm in a HTML file and of course, this is where it all begins. And we're gonna just wrap the uh, hamburger menu and the menu in the navigation itself inside of a header element. Now, next up, we're gonna have the button, all right? So this is the hamburger button and we're gonna use a button element for this. Now, this is real important. This is the logic portion. We wanna put in an attribute that's specific to this use case called pop over target. And then we want to bind it to something called menu. Of course, this could be any name that you wanted to give it. Now inside, I'm just gonna use an SVG graphic. I'm gonna paste in just a three, you know, kind of stylized design for a hamburger menu. Nothing important happening here, but this, however, you wanna pay attention to. So after the button, we're gonna have a nav, and that's gonna have a few attributes as well. So we have to define an attribute called popover letting us know that this is the actual popover, the thing that will pop up. Now we also wanna put a role attribute and bind it to menu, and then we'll also give it an ID of menu as well. All right, menu, menu, menu. So after that, we're going to also have a close button. So again, we're gonna use the button element and we can also use the popover target menu as well. So let's go ahead and just copy this stuff. All right, and then we're also gonna put in popover target action. I know it's kind of a big mess. I uh, equals hide. So hide. And then I'm gonna put in another SVG graphic for a close sort of button. And then we're gonna have an unordered list, which is be our typical navigation structure, home preferences, my account support, whatever. And that's it. I mean, that's literally all we need to do just to fill out the page a little bit. I will put a main with an H1 that says no JS menu reveal. Oopsie, right there. Yeah. All right, perfect. So now that we have that, I we can go ahead, right click, open with live server, and we'll see if this thing even works. Let's click it. Yeah, it actually does work. Look at that. So this is the default styling that's present I, when you use this popover here in Chrome. All right, uh, if you can see it's centered, it has an outline. We can override all this stuff and even apply transition animations with CSS. So let's go ahead and focus on that. So I'm gonna paste in just some basic rule sets here. Nothing, nothing exciting happening here. Um, we're also gonna go ahead and give our buttons styling here. Again, nothing is crazy is happening here with respect to this new way of dealing with menus. Um, now we're gonna have a nav element. Okay, so everything's gonna be pretty much typical uh, with, with this rule set. So, you know, as you can see, I'm just using a, a width, left, bottom auto, you know, we're just moving things around, giving a, a different background color, no border like that white border or that black border you saw, height, 100 viewport height. We're just kind of getting the menu itself when it comes out styled. All right, so if I save this now, when we go back and look at it, I, it should look like this, all right? Look at that. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Now what we wanna do is I wanna specify a translate property, 100% on the X axis. So when we do this and I go back, we can't see it because we've moved it out of the way. It's off, it's off to the right of the browser, you can't even see it. Now we also want to apply, if we wanted to have a transition um, when it comes back, we also want to apply a transition property. But let's, what, let's wait for that part. Um, let's actually get it showing up again. And the way we can get it styled back to 100 or to, to zero on the X axis is simply, we're going to say an pop over hyphen open. And we say translate zero, zero. All right, now let's save this and see what happens at this point. So we click it. All right, so it's basically the exact same behavior that we had before. 
Uh, but it doesn't look like it's different because we're not actually animating it at all. So to do that, we wanna put in a transition. So our transition property here is gonna be translate 0 0.5 seconds and then also display 0 0.5 seconds ease out and allow hyphen discrete. So if you don't specify this, this will basically not work. It won't work correctly. We also need to specify an at role starting hyphen style. And we simply take this value right here and paste it in here. So it's kind of defining and it's, it's letting this new system know that translate is 100% on the X axis axis rather when you know, uh, in, in its default state or its starting state. So if we save this and we go back, look at that. So now we might have a nice transition and it works exactly as you expect, except without any JavaScript. Um, real fine, on a final note, just because this looks so ugly, I am gonna paste in just a few more rule sets right here. Again, it's not really pertinent to the purpose of this tutorial, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it because I'm a designer, I'm a little bit, I can't leave the tutorial looking like that. So if I click this, there we go, much better. You could add some hover interactions if you wish, but this is exactly how it works. So our close button works, this button works, it opens it up. We can also use the escape key and we could also just click anywhere on the outside of it. So all this functionality is built in to the system in the browser, simply using HTML in CSS, which is freaking awesome. Of course, you can't use this right now or you shouldn't rather, uh, because our accessibility issues, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and obviously Firefox, this doesn't yet exist. But anyhow, it's fun to look at the th how things will be done in the future so that we can worry less about having the program stuff with JavaScript. All right, everybody, if you enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe, and I will see you all very soon. Goodbye.